Greetings and salutations. It's me, Colin. I'm proud to announce that Colin's Last Stand has a brand new weekly podcast all about PlayStation. It's called Sacred Symbols, and it's co-hosted by comedian, YouTuber, and social commentator Chris Raygun. If you liked my old shows, Podcast Beyond and P.S. I Love You XOXO, then Sacred Symbols is made for you. It's a hardcore PlayStation podcast for hardcore PlayStation fans and covers all the news, new releases, and happenings of the day. You can subscribe to Sacred Symbols on iTunes, Google Play, and other podcast services or at SoundCloud.com slash Sacred Symbols. Each episode will also be posted here on YouTube in audio-only format. If you want to access each episode of Sacred Symbols three days early and without ads, as well as gain other special perks like being able to contribute questions to the show, please consider supporting Collins Last Stand on Patreon at patreon.com slash Collins Last Stand. Remember, supporting CLS on Patreon nets you perks, early access, and more for all of CLS's podcasts, including the Retro Series Knockback, the Eclectic Interview Podcast Fireside Chats, and even this year's SideQuest. Thank you for your kindness, generosity, and support. Without you, CLS couldn't and wouldn't exist. But enough chatter. On to the show. If you haven't heard, and I highly doubt you haven't, a plagiarism scandal has rocked video games media. And though it's huge news in our sphere, I wasn't entirely sure I wanted to dedicate an episode of SideQuest to it. In fact, I was pretty sure that I wasn't going to, as it was pretty cut and dry from my perspective, and I was preparing to talk about something else. But as the story has developed, and as this person's plagiarism seems to have gone further than a single instance, I think there's more to be said here. There's especially more to be said because the plagiarist in question released a half-hearted and transparent apology video so ineffective in whatever it was trying to accomplish that he actually deleted it following an overwhelmingly negative response to its non-message. Philip Mewson, former Nintendo editor of IGN, the world's biggest and most read video game and entertainment website, has been seemingly caught red-handed copying the work of others, and has destroyed his own nascent career through sheer laziness and a brazen disregard for the norms of writing. He's also cast a pall on his old outlet and those he worked with, unfairly tethering a brand and a small group of innocent writers to his awful deed for years to come. It's as unfair as it is unfortunate, not for him, but rather for those burned and scarred by the inevitable collateral damage that will invariably ensue. Now, before I get started, I should note that I'm not approaching this without inherent bias. Fact is, this situation makes me viscerally angry. See, I worked at IGN for 12 years of my life. I was a freelancer and an intern, and I rose through the ranks to senior editor of the site. When I departed IGN at the end of 2014 to pursue my old company Kinda Funny full-time, it was the most difficult decision of my life, because that site gave me everything. I look back at my lengthy tenure there incredibly fondly, beginning as a freshman in college and ending at 30 years old. I am loyal to IGN and to the people there, past and present, who helped me along the way, and I don't like when their name is sullied. Likewise, I know what it's like to do the job Mr. Mewson and his ex-colleagues do, because I did it for a very long time, and it's always a shame to see that role diminished because of a single bad actor. So I think it's important to be transparent here. I'm simply not a truly objective observer. I was in the trenches for many years, and it's obviously going to paint my feelings and my perspective, because as upsetting as the situation is now that I'm on the outside, I couldn't even imagine how I'd feel from the inside. Though in a few private conversations with IGN employees concerning these charges, they're none too happy. Working at IGN is a hard job. It's a lot of work, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Cutting corners is unacceptable. Stealing others' work and passing it off as your own is outright unconscionable. That said, I did reach out to Mr. Mewson, both publicly and privately, to both invite him on my interview podcast series Fireside Chats, and to see if he will answer any questions in regard to this episode of SideQuest. Much to the chagrin of many games media types, who have proven disinterested yet again in doing actual journalism, Mr. Mewson's input here is relevant to the story, and I have a smorgasbord of questions I'd just love to ask. Whether or not he's worthy of any level of trust, or has anything interesting to say, or will just double down on his half-hearted non-acceptance of reality is of course another thing entirely. But since journalists chase stories, and he is the story, it felt right to at least solicit input. Unfortunately, while Mr. Mewson responded to me, he declined my offers. So all we're left to do here is to fill in the blanks on our own, the very best we can, and draw some rather obvious and reasonable conclusions in the process. With all of that now out of the way, let's get you caught up, because this story moved rapidly over the past week. On Monday, August 6th, the review embargo for a game called Dead Cells was lifted. Dead Cells is a long-in-development Metroidvania slash roguelike from French studio Motion Twin, and indeed, the last video to go up on this channel before this video went live is a let's play of that game. Mr. Mewson, charged with reviewing the game on behalf of IGN, posted his criticism that day, but it wasn't long before a YouTuber by the name of Boomstick, or Boomstick Gaming, noticed conspicuous similarities between the script for his video review, posted on his channel back on July 24th and based on an early access version of Dead Cells, and IGN's review, written, edited, and posted by Mewson. 
Confused and unsure about what to do, Boomstick reached out to his audience in a video that now has well over a million views by the time this video published, pointing out the similarities between the two works and wondering what his best course of action would be. The similarities, mind you, are striking. Indeed, they're obvious. Some people think the definition of plagiarism is verbatim copying what has already been written, but that's actually not the definition of the word at all. Merriam-Webster defines plagiarism as, quote, to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own, or to use another's production without crediting the source, end quote, or, quote, to commit literary theft, present as new and original an idea or product derived from an existing source, end quote. In Mewson's own baffling and since-deleted apology video posted to his old YouTube channel, he notes that anyone watching his video, quote, probably already heard about the plagiarism allegations, end quote, and that while he takes responsibility for what happened, he never quite gets to what happened. It appears he possibly doesn't understand what he did wrong, but from my perspective, it seems more a case of him trying to bury his misdeeds under a mistaken notion that remolding another person's work isn't as bad as copying it outright. He's wrong, of course. Are these allegations per se? I suppose. But this isn't a court of law, and the evidence against him is fairly conclusive and even damning to virtually any observer. I reached out to Boomstick to ask him about the situation he found himself in, and inquired about the point of realization when he concluded his work was lifted. How did he figure it out, and how did it make him feel? Here's what Boomstick told me. Quote, At first, I only noticed one sentence from the verdict section of the written review that sounded familiar, and I casually mentioned it to a friend that I was in a game with at the time. I did not think much about it at that moment, but an hour later, I decided that I probably should actually watch the video review. I did not have any idea that the video would reach more than my subscribers, and the line at the end of the video title, What Do I Do, was genuine, and I was honestly seeking advice, end quote. Boomstick received the advice he sought, and it came in droves. A consensus quickly formed, and it was the right one from my perspective. Philip Mewson obviously used Boomstick Gaming's review as a source while writing his own review, to the extent that many portions were merely reworked and reworded stances, opinions, and ideas that, when played next to each other, as Boomstick's video so acutely did, rendered the similarities completely unavoidable. The jig was quickly up. It wasn't long before Boomstick's video went viral, as August 6th seeped into August 7th. To IGN's credit, the team there rapidly took down Mewson's review during the evening of August 6th, replacing it with a note from the editor that earnestly read as follows, quote, as a group of writers and creators who value our own work and that of others in our field, the editorial staff of IGN takes plagiarism very seriously. In light of concerns that have been raised about our Dead Cells review, we've removed it for the time being and are investigating." End quote. It didn't take the site long to get to the bottom of things, though. On August 7th, the site's leadership vowed in a statement to re-review the game, which it has since done, and Philip Mewson, the author of the original plagiarized work, was summarily and rightfully fired. To learn more about the investigative process behind Mewson's dismissal and the decision that ultimately led to his firing, I reached out to my old colleague at IGN, reviews editor Dan Stapleton, who I actually sat next to in the office for my last couple of years at the site. Mr. Stapleton noted to me that he was actually on vacation when this went down, as was IGN founder and head honcho Per Schneider. But knowing both of these men for a long time, and knowing they're rooted in principle, it's no surprise that others in that environment took the steps they did to right this profound wrong. This is all on Philip Mewson and his duplicitous and unethical behavior. Again, the true shame is that while Mr. Mewson is solely guilty of plagiarism and is the lone person to take the fall, the harm doesn't begin and end there. Before we go any further, I have to throw this in, because while it seemed like the Dead Cells plagiarism fiasco may have been limited to a single instance, all I could think about once I got past the bullshit that IGN was going to have to deal with for literally years now thanks to this guy is how bizarre it is that Mr. Mewson would even need to plagiarize a review. Plagiarism under any circumstance is a high crime in writing, and rightfully so, but I found it truly strange that he actually needed to copy another person's feelings and opinions, which is typically not what you hear about when you hear about plagiarism. Usually, plagiarism happens when people lift scholarly or journalistic passages, and usually has to do with unique facts and the attribution of those facts. That Mr. Mewson felt the need to listen to and read others' opinions on a game and then copy those opinions is something I still can't actually wrap my head around. As I said on Twitter, writing reviews other than writing news stories is by far the easiest task asked of games media. I wrote scores and scores of reviews at IGN. All it requires is to play a game and formulate a response to a single question. What did you think? That Philip Mewson couldn't do that without assistance shows that he wasn't only unethical, but was in fact way out of his depth. For as mortified as I'm sure he is about getting caught, he should be equally embarrassed that he doesn't know how to tap into his own feelings, thoughts, and opinions without stealing another's. So when on August 10th, Mewson finally broke his silence by releasing a now-deleted video on his YouTube channel, a video that I have a copy of and that you're seeing footage of interspersed throughout this episode of SideQuest, I eagerly watched it, expecting that we'd find a contrite and sorrowful man willing to take responsibility for his actions, accept the consequences, and move on with his life, perhaps rebuilding the YouTube channel that catapulted him to his job at IGN in the first place, and maybe even finding some success doing it. 
Remember, coming back from a charge of plagiarism does happen, and it's not even that uncommon to find success if you do. Doris Kearns Goodwin, one of the most famous living historians in the English-speaking world, was slammed with charges of plagiarism in the early 2000s. By the mid-2000s, she was winning awards for her seminal book, Team of Rivals, an exceptional piece of writing about the Abraham Lincoln administration. It's just that you have to be apologetic, understand what you did wrong, whether it was accidental or intentional, vow to never do it again, and perhaps most importantly, ensure that the scope of your misdeeds is limited. Unfortunately for Philip Mewson, none of this happens to be true for him, and so his fall is and will continue to be quite ungoodwin like in its permanence and disgrace. Mr. Mewson never truly apologizes for what he did in his video, nor does he even truly acknowledge that he did anything wrong at all. It's nebulous, perhaps intentionally so, and it makes it hard to figure if he truly doesn't understand what he did, or if he's simply a dedicated deceiver. He never just comes out and says, yeah, I screwed up, here's how, and I'm sorry. If that happened, many may not forgive him, but perhaps we could accept it, accept the punishment, and move on. For as overt as his copying of Boomstick was, he doesn't even apologize to him, instead strangely wishing him well, and to Boomstick's credit, he has remained well above the fray for the duration of this drama, both before Mewson's now pulled apology video and after, something I actually quite admire. I asked him about IGN's decision to fire Mr. Mewson, and Boomstick told me, quote, I can see from a giant website's point of view why they would have to do it, but I do not know this gentleman, and do not pass judgment on those I have no knowledge of, end quote. But there's more vital texture to this story that proves even more damning for Mewson, because as many predicted as this was going on, if you plagiarize and get caught, it's probably not the first time you plagiarized, it's just the first time anyone knew about it. This seemingly proved to be true, as a Kotaku reader alerted the website to a Nintendo Life review for FIFA 18, dated from September of last year. The review was written by veteran games journalist Chris Scullion, and Mr. Scullion wasn't at all happy with the development, tweeting at Mewson's now-deleted promotional tweet for his now-deleted video, and even doing a scathing video of his own that merely shows you the many so-called similarities between his review and the one Mr. Mewson posted on his old YouTube channel. It's exactly what happened with Boomstick and Dead Cells, and it's completely unacceptable. I reached out to Mr. Scullion to talk further about the situation, but he declined, citing political differences with me. Still, I encourage you to check out his video, because it represents a second open and shut case. Boomstick and IGN's editorial staff, along with their collective audiences, aren't the only victims now. You can add Mr. Scullion and his audience to that list, and the list, as it turns out, would grow even further. That's because Mr. Mewson made what is perhaps his final, albeit devastating, mistake. In his apology video, not only does he bring up the charge of plagiarism in regard to Mr. Scullion's FIFA video, outright denying it, he goes as far as to challenge Kotaku and Kotaku's Jason Schreier to find more examples of his supposed plagiarism. Mr. Schreier, of course, is perhaps the most talented and respected actual video games journalist in the industry, and when I heard that proclamation, I knew what was going to happen next. And what I knew was going to happen, did. Schreier posted striking similarities fed to him by another reader between Mucin's Metroid Samus Returns review on his YouTube channel and website Engadget's review. It's absolutely insane, and it makes you wonder how many more of these instances are out there. There's probably more, but I don't think we need to wait to render a conclusion. He faked his way into a position at the biggest gaming website in the world, and his fraud was revealed. The second he spoke about how he does a ton of research and reads around when he's writing a review, which literally no one does outside of getting the raw facts, and no one with even an ounce of experience would actually want to do in order to ensure the unsullied uniqueness of their perspective, was when I realized that this dude is clearly pulling a fast one on everybody. I've already spoken at length about how unfortunate it is that the other totally innocent people at IGN now have to deal with cleaning up this guy's mess. It's not going to be an easy thing to do, and it's not fair that they have to do it. It reminds me a bit of when IGN's old editor-in-chief, Steve Butts, sullied IGN PlayStation's reputation, the portion of the site I was responsible for, by publishing, without my input or even letting me know what his sources knew or told him, a story about The Last Guardian's cancellation back in 2014. Mr. Butts was completely wrong, and as anyone who was there at the time will tell you, I was so distressed that years of hard work would be lost with some readers, listeners, and viewers through no fault of my own that I actually considered quitting in protest. Cooler heads prevailed, though. He published a retraction and apology, and we all ultimately moved on. It's going to be harder for the staff to move on here, though, because first off, this is way, way more serious, and secondly, it's unclear how much damage Mr. Mewson even did. Three instances of apparent plagiarism have been uncovered, although only one is on IGN. They're now going to have to spend precious resources going through everything he ever wrote there to figure out what's what. It's time and money down the drain, and I wouldn't at all be surprised if they come up with more criticism they have to retract and delete. It's a shame, all because of someone's profound laziness and complete inability to articulate original thoughts and ideas without help. But perhaps the biggest shame of all when the dust settles is the adverse effect this situation and situations like it will have on the dwindling trust between video game websites and their readerships, relationships that have universally become more toxic as time has gone on. 
And I say that as a persistent critic of modern games journalism and criticism, which is wildly broken in countless ways. Thing is, though, rumors and innuendo about the goings-ons at websites are commonplace and almost always false, sometimes laughably so. For every Gerstmann gate, there are a thousand unfounded conspiracy theories. The shortcomings of modern games websites have to do with individuals and their failure to understand their role, and not with tinfoil-fueled what-ifs. But situations like this give fodder to the people who want it, and the result of that can only be negative. The long and short of it, though, is this dishonest person occupied a seat that could have been occupied by someone far more deserving. I won't sit here and render further judgment on Philip Mewson, other than to say that I hope he finds his way in life doing something else totally unrelated to the gaming industry. In my 16 years in covering games professionally, I've never once heard of something like this, and I hope I don't again. It's okay to be inspired by other scribes, to love a turn of phrase or a stylistic flourish. All writers are indelibly affected by what they read. All writers become inspired to write in the first place by what they read. It's a fusion of all these elements and inspirations that allow us to develop over time our own style and our own voice. But to outright copy what you've read, to go through other people's work and basically rewrite their thoughts to make them seem like your own, it's what flunky high school students do, not professionals, not honorable people, not writers. It's not that I wish ill on Mr. Mewson because I don't. As one person tangentially involved with the situation suggested to me, the cognitive dissonance on display here indicates that Mewson may just believe his own version of reality, but that doesn't have to affect our interpretation of what's right before our very eyes. This sort of behavior has no place in our industry or in any industry, and that it's been rightfully condemned and swiftly dealt with shows that, for all of games media's many problems, there are certain things we can all agree on.